Hello, this is Ken, your podcast preacher, and I want to welcome you back to Deep Water. This podcast is brought to you by Applied Strengths Ministry, where we believe working together in our strengths is the effect of working out the will and calling of God in our lives. The title of this message is Calling All Fear, Calling All Fear. This is a multi-episode series in which this is episode three of three. So we get back to the scriptural reading that we did in the last message. Genesis 4, 7. If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Luke 19, 40. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Matthew 21, 19, 20. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves, and said to it, Let no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How did the fig tree wither away so soon? Something equally as interesting in Matthew 21, 19, 20, is that the fig tree withered away once it found out it could no longer produce fruit. Isn't that the same thing that happens to a Christian that's not producing any fruit? They kind of sort of just wither away? Anyways, is this scripture a story about how quickly we should obey Jesus? Maybe the fig tree is telling us something. Maybe it should be a part of this message. Nope, not past this point. Numbers 22:30. So the donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your donkey on which you have ridden ever since I became yours to this day? Was I ever disposed to do this to you? Daniel 3:25. Look, he answered, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. So what I'm saying is that fear, like rocks, sin, wind, waves, trees, is alive, and it is a spirit, and it will respond to our request when beckoned. Look, 2 Timothy 1.7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Maybe this is why we are instructed to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Spirit sees spirits and spiritual things. Flesh sees flesh and fleshly things. Galatians 5.16, I say then, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Galatians 5.25 If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Again, here's another coin for the well. Living in the Spirit is different than walking in the Spirit. But I shall save that journey for another message. So they cried out for fear, and fear responded. But because they were still learning, they did not rebuke that Spirit, but rather responded in the flesh. And so fear remained among them. Now watch this. So when Peter attempted to apply his faith, fear interjected because it was called for. It was invited to the party, so to speak, and therefore given permission to be among them. P.S. Don't ask for fear to join your party. It's a prickly party pooper. Wrapping this story up and to reiterate, this is not a story about the UFC fishermen, a wayward boating trip, Jesus caspering his disciples. Nope. This is about understanding that if you call for something to enter into a decision, a circumstance or situation, and you are not getting the results that you are expecting, which is Jesus' results, as those are the only results we should all expect, then take a look at your words and thoughts in that very moment and deal with them. Change what you speak to the situation and you will get different results. The situation will obey. In James 3, 4, 17, He shares a story that reflects that our tongue is a beast of a weapon, or can be, and may lead to our downfall in life. Look also at ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder, wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles? And the tongue is a fire, a world of inequity. The tongue is so sad among our members that it defiles the whole body. It sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, reptile and creature of the sea, is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not be so. 
Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives? Or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. We know that our hearts and our brains also play a part in our decision-making in times of trouble, but I have dealt with both body parts and other messages. A solid takeaway. If you call for fear, don't be surprised if it answers and begins to hang around, seeking to cause havoc in your life. It is good to know that fear usually hides in the trials, persecutions, testings, and all kinds of storms in your life. It is like the pesky telemarketer, the email bandits, or texty cowboy. Once the door is open, bam bing fazula. You're busy dealing with it all the time. So cry out for Jesus when the storm comes and you can sink your troubles to the bottom of the sea. Well, that's it for today and for this episode series. Remember, it's not what you find wrong or disagree with regarding these messages, but what you can take away from it. Together we can do more to impact the kingdom than if we work alone. Let's flip the script and kill, still and destroy the works of the enemy and create space for the light of lights to shine through into people's lives. Find us even click on the like and subscribe button. Let's build this ministry together. Thanks and see you next time in deep waters.